Hi everyone. Welcome to episode six of my video podcast. And it's, you know, it, it's a video. It's also a podcast. It's meant to be listened to. So we'll call it a podcast. And there you go. So today I want to talk about a debate that will never be finished, a debate that will go on forever. No one will ever come to a resolution because it's all based on our personal opinions. And we all know that everybody has a different opinion and how much opinions are worth. They're not worth more than your own opinion, right? So this is actually, this came from a question in the public Facebook group that I have and Miracola posted it and I'm just going to read it because I, I think it was an interesting question and it, it there wasn't a thoughtful conversation that happened afterwards and it it's just, it's interesting, right? So, and like I said, this is never going to be resolved, but I think that everyone's going to have an opinion. Feel free to post it in the comments. All right, she said, I had a private discussion with other shop owners about handmade and POD. And POD is print on demand, in case you don't know. And that's where you design the thing and then you send it to a company that makes the product and sends it to the customer. It is not drop shipping. You're actually designing the product. So it's not like you're buying something someone else made and sending it. It's print on demand. You have a product printed that you designed and they send it. But you're not actually touching the product to make it, Okay. Handmade clearly is being made by someone individually and that's handmade. So she's having a private discussion with sellers. That's a very important point to note in this because we'll talk about that in a minute. All right. So the question is, what's the different value? What's the value between two items? The first one is a handmade tote bag with a flower print. The shop owner bought the fabric at the market or fabric shop and sewed a tote of it. Somebody somewhere designed and printed the floral print on fabric. This tote bag is handmade because the shop owner sewed the tote. The floral print is the selling point of this tote. Okay, now I think that's wrong, but we'll go back to that. All right, the second item is a print on demand tote bag where the fabric has a flower print that is created by the shop owner. The POD company printed this design on the fabric and sewed the tote. Creative because the shop owner designed the floral print, which is the selling point of this tote. So here are two tote bags where the shop owner uses the services of others. So why is handmade for most people considered superior to POD products? Very interesting question. Now, this is, a, you know, this is a debate that's gone on for centuries, centuries, and it, it will never end because as soon as you think that it's something has been resolved, you meet someone else who has a totally different opinion. And this really does boil down to opinions. So this is my opinion. And like I said, if you're going to disagree with me, feel free, post it in the comments because everyone's going to have a different perspective on this. But the fact is that no matter what craft you make, no matter what art you make, no matter what object you make, there's always going to be someone who does it in a different way. And you're going to look at that and go, you're cheating. Okay. And I think that's really what this comes down to is that we feel like someone is cheating and it chaps us. It makes you mad. Okay. Now let's, let's go back to the statement and I'm going to point out where I think there's a little bit of a wrong assumption in this, these two items. Okay. So the first one was the handmade tote bag that was made with purchased fabric. And she says the tote bag is handmade and the floral print is the selling point of this tote. I would challenge that based on who's looking at it. Okay. So one thing to note, remember that she's talking to other sellers. Now sellers, people who sell things for a living and probably are making the thing, if we're talking about small business owners who have home-based businesses, like we all do, um, those are what we call dual identity consumers. Dual identity consumers both sell and buy things. So when we look at something, we will look at it from both perspectives. When we go to Etsy, we might not click the ads because we know that Etsy seller is paying for the ads and we want to go to the shop and save them the money. Most people don't think like that because people who only buy things, which is the majority of the population, they just, they don't sell things. They just go and shop, you know, those are called single identity consumers. And that's because they're only buying. So dual identity consumers are people who both sell and buy, and we tend to look at things in a different way. And if you make things, then you definitely look at things in a different way because you have a different perspective of how much work and skill and talent and knowledge has to go into making something that you make when you start with 
raw materials and you put it together to create a new object. Now, that is not to say that people who design things, right, who design computer generated programs, they use a computer to draw things. And I'm not talking about talk, like typing something into an AI generator and letting the computer do it. That, that takes no talent. And, you know, I would, I, I know that someone's going to argue with me. You need to know what to tell the computer because it's not going to generate. Shut up. Okay. It doesn't take talent to talk, to type or talk into a computer and tell a computer to make something for you. The talent lies on the end of the person who's programming that program. So it's not, it's not you. It's the person who programmed the program and probably the person who did the original artwork that that program was trained on, but that's a different conversation and there's still lawsuits going on about that. So let's just skip that for now. But when you're a dual identity consumer and you actually create products yourself, you know what work that goes into it and you know the skill that it takes. And so when someone comes along and says, I'm just going to send this to a company and have them make it for me, even though I designed it, it feels like they're cheating. Okay. Now the problem here is that we're looking at two tote bags where it's really like you said, the creativity in the original question, the creativity on one end is the sewing of the tote bag. The creativity on the other side is the designing of the pattern. So it's two separate types of creativity. It just happens to be that print on demand allows you to end up with a product. And that's, it, it is a problem because it confuses the issue when you're talking about things like this. So I think that as far as POD goes, it's not so much that people say, oh, and when I say people, I'm talking about sellers. I'm not talking about consumers because I don't think that consumers really care too much. There are people who do want handmade because they know that there is a person on the other end. And I think when we say handmade, I think we're leaving off the words handmade by the person who I'm buying it from. Because most people, you know, you know, somewhere, somewhere in you know, whatever foreign country these things are manufactured and shipped over here, there's a human that's actually making this thing or they're running the machine to make it or whatever. So you can make the argument that everything is handmade. But I think that we all know that that is kind of a weak argument that is just thrown up there. And when we say handmade, we in our heads are thinking handmade by the person I am buying it from. So the problem, quote unquote, and it's not a problem, but the problem when you're comparing handmade and POD is that you're looking at the final product and you're saying this one is worse than that one, but that's not really comparing apples to apples because if you're just comparing the creativity of it, the creativity in print on demand comes from the designing of it, of whatever pattern that is, you know, and the creativity in sewing or quilting or knitting comes from the actual construction of the item. So on one hand, you have someone who's constructing the item, they're building something. On the other hand, you have someone who's designing something and someone else is doing the building. So for the people who are building the thing themselves, the POD process feels like it's cheating to get to that item. But it's not comparing apples to apples. And you have to think of the design work as the creative part, because that's what is the creative part. The creative part of POD is not having a, a manufacturer make that for you. That's not where the creativity comes in. The creativity comes in in the designing of the item. Now, I will say, though, that a lot of, and I, my guess is that a lot of POD sellers would probably have this perspective too if you do all of your own design work. My guess is that if I surveyed POD sellers who do all of their own design work, and I mean like not using clip art that they bought from someone, not using SVG files and sending it to the POD company and saying, I designed this because you didn't. You didn't design that. If you buy clip art and you buy an SVG file and you just send it to the POD company, you didn't design anything. Now, if you're taking elements and putting them together to make something new, you can make the argument that you're designing something. But my guess is that for the people that start with a blank computer screen and a stylus, 
and you create everything yourself using computer programs or design work programs or whatever, that you probably think of the people who are using clip art and not changing anything and just using it as is as cheating, right? There's always an element of they're cheating, they're getting away with something and they're getting credit for doing the same thing that I do, but they don't do the same thing that I do. And a lot of it comes down to that. But, you know, it, it's, it, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is when you're, when you're real honest about it. So it's the same, it's the same thing in many, many, many forms. And, you know, I, when I did quilts, I had this argument with my aunt who was also a quilter. I quilted by hand. I quilted everything by hand, but I pieced everything together with a machine. All right. So I did all my piecing with the machine and then I quilted the quilts by hand. She pieced everything by hand and then she quilted it by hand. All right. So we had the argument that I was cheating because I used a sewing machine to piece the quilt together. And I disagreed with her, you know, and it, but it doesn't matter. I mean, there's always someone who can take it one level back. And when I did wedding cakes, there were people who used cake mix all the time and they claimed that they baked from scratch. And you do not bake from scratch if you're using a cake mix, I'm sorry to say. And here's, here's the thing. If I put the raw ingredients in front of someone and they don't know what to do with them, then you don't know how to bake from scratch. If I give you a cake mix and you're like, okay, I'll dump an egg in it. You're not baking from scratch. You're using a mix. So there's always going to be, you know, this one is worse than that one. Clearly people who make a thing themselves are going to understand the knowledge and complexity of experience that has to go into making something like that. And this argument will never be resolved because let's say that, you know, and I think that AI is really like, I'm, you know, I talked about the AI, um, you know, people say, oh, it takes a lot of creativity to make AI produce. It's like, no, stop. You know, if you're just telling a computer what to do, you could argue that that's creative, but I don't think so. Cause you're not doing the work. I don't know. That's my opinion. And if you want to argue with me, feel free in the comments, whatever. But my, my guess is that the reason when it boils, when it completely boils down to it, the reason that people think hand, that sellers, that sellers think handmade is better than POD is because of the reputation that POD has received in recent months and just even within the last two years when so many people got into POD and so many people have been told all you have to do is copy the designs that are selling and run some ads and you'll make $10,000 a month. And we know that's not true, but people come into selling on Etsy and selling online with that mentality. And basically there's no creativity in it. And that's where POD is getting its reputation as being worse than handmade and being worse than something that someone has actually designed themselves. So if you are a POD seller who s designs all your own graphics, you don't just grab a clip art and slap it on a mug, okay, without changing something, without making it different, then you probably are being associated with the people who do that. And yesterday when I was thinking about this, I went to Etsy and well, first I went to Creative Fabrica and I looked up SVG files for a very specific t-shirt slogan. Okay. And then I went to Etsy and lo and behold, there was exactly the same file on multiple shops on Etsy, clearly, you know, not following the Etsy terms of service about changing the design and all of them were POD shops. And I think that that's what's going on with this argument. And, you know, like I said, this is going to be the same argument with different industries. So just right now, POD is kind of in the spotlight. But I think that that's what's going on is that there are so many sellers who sell POD products where all they're doing is taking someone else's artwork. They're not changing a thing. They're sending it to the company, they're listing something on Etsy, and they're running ads, and there is no creativity involved with that person. The person who designed it 
was creative unless they you know copied it from someone else but the person who is selling it as a quote unquote handmade item as defined by Etsy didn't design it they never touched the product and that's how they wanted their business to be they're not you know, there's a whole bunch of people now who are selling online using POD companies that are they're not designers they're just copycats and that's what all of the POD designers who are actually making your own designs are being lumped in with. And this goes back to what I was talking about last week about be careful who you hang out with. And this is not like you're choosing to hang out with these people. But in this case, I think that print on demand is getting a reputation for just being a way to flood the market with a bunch of the same kind of designs and people copy each other and there's no creativity in it because they're just trying to sell what's selling. And, you know, that's that's just how it is right now. So I think that that's why sellers think that handmade is more valuable than POD. But when you're comparing two tote bags, it's not comparing the same creativity. One is comparing construction. One is comparing design. And just because they both end up with a tote bag, it's not the same process. So I think if you compare the process and not the product, it would, it, it's a different conversation, right? So I think that that's, I have so much more to say about this, but I think that I'm just going to leave it there. Leave me your comments. And let me know what you think. If you think I'm right about where, you know, where this is coming from with the print on demand stuff. Um, do you think that I'm missing something? Is there a point that I'm, I'm missing here? I don't know. But I think part of it is that people say, oh, print on demand is cheating. But I think that we're really kind of comparing the wrong thing. And that the people who are designing their own print on demand products are being lumped in with the people who are not. And they're definitely cheating as far as claiming that something is handmade when it's not, because that's not handmade. If you steal someone's design and you don't design it and you just send someone else to make it, it's not handmade by you. And I think that's the part that we're leaving out. Handmade by the person that I bought it from with some skill to make something that did not exist before. All right, so that's all for this week. Leave me any questions and I will talk to you later.